So I'm going to try every time uh, I upload a video, I'm going to try to show you my blood sugar now that I'm a Dexcom G6 user. So right now, I am about two hours post-meal, and I'm sitting at 157, and I'm stable. So not too bad, honestly. Hi everyone, it's Maddie. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome to day 14 of Diabetes Awareness Month, November 14th, 2018. And this is a very special video. Happy World Diabetes Day, everyone. Um, I wanted to show you my shirt I'm wearing. I am wearing a shirt that says, We are greater than our highs and lows, World Diabetes Day 2018. It has uh, like a little uh, meter with test strips, an insulin pump, and insulin pens. So it's actually a really neat shirt. Um, I'm, I am wearing blue jeans. I'm not exactly wearing blue for this shirt, but um, I will post photos on my Instagram and stuff um, if you want to go check those out. And I'm beyond type 1 of me wearing my blue uh, proud owner of a useless pancreas shirt. So that would be really cool to wear that on actual World Diabetes Day. Um, I'm filming this a couple days ahead of time, again, just because it is a little busy. But for whatever reason, I decided to wear my World Diabetes shirt today. Um, and again, the, the day you'll be seeing this is Happy World Diabetes Day. And today's question is a little bit more special, uh, only because the person uh, that the day that this uh, World Diabetes Day came about was this person's birthday. So I'm going to wish him a happy birthday. Happy birthday, Sir Frederick Banting. Um, he would be 127 years old today. Um, and he was a co-creator of insulin. So today's question is all about him. Who is Dr. F Dr. or Sir Frederick Banning, and what kind of role does he play uh, with those of us living with diabetes? So like I had said before, he is a co-creator of insulin, uh, the vital hormone that keeps me and many other type 1 diabetics alive today. Um, and I'm going to kind of do a little bit of a history for you, kind of how insulin was first recognized and, so, and how was diabetes first recognized. Um, I'm not going to do everything, I'm going to do very general. Um, but the things I do skip, um, I might do a separate video on those because there are other important things that happen beforehand, so give this video a big thumbs up if you want to see those. Well, with that being said, let's jump into the history. Uh, so way beforehand that they realized that, uh, diabetes was mostly, in type 1 specifically, was caused by a lack of insulin and extremely high blood sugars because of that lack of insulin. There were ancient Egyptians that noticed that people were peeing a lot and peeing a lot and drinking a lot, these people that had diabetes, and that their death was rather quick um, after these onset of uh, symptoms for a handful of days. Uh, they basically had died from the super high blood sugars. Um, but eventually they had coined the term diabetes mellitus. Um, the Greeks did uh, a, few a few thousand years later. Um, it was coined, which means to pass through much much urine, sweetened like honey. So diabetes means to pass through much urine, and mellitus means sweet like honey. They had actually, uh, back way back when, they noticed that the urine was extremely sweet. They would actually put a little bit on their tongue and taste it and notice that it had a very sweet flavor. Uh, and that was because, obviously, with if those of you that do know, if you have really high blood sugars, um, especially like me, when I was diagnosed, I was passing a lot of glucose through my urine. Um, so I'm going to fast forward a little bit. I'm going to fast forward way to 1921. Um, there's a lot of other things that happened in between time, like in the mid-1800s. Uh, they discovered the beta cells and the islets of Langerhan. But again, I want to do more separate videos on that. So anyway, let's fast forward uh, to 1921. So... Um, in 1921, Dr. Frederick Banting and Charles H. Best discovered the vital hormone insulin um, in the pancreatic extracts of dogs. This was during the 19th century, um, basically when they were trying to really figure out what diabetes really was and uh, how to kind of, you know, stop people from having a death sentence. Because before then, those of us especially that were living uh, with type 1 diabetes before 1921, those people were put on, um, they knew that it was caused by um, excess sugar, so they would limit their sugar like extremely, like they were like on a starvation diet. Um, and eventually that diet would kill them because they were lacking, literally lacking sugar. But they knew they were lacking some sort of thing to allow the body to be able to use that sugar, but they didn't know what it was. Um, so those that were kind of living in that 1915 to 1920 period 
were clinging to life and hoping that somebody would discover something. Um, and thankfully, uh, Dr. Frederick Banding and his coworker Charles H. Best did discover it. Um, they had, again, they had extracted it from the pancreatic, um, part of a dog in the beta cells, obviously, but, uh, they, uh, what they would do is they took the, ins the pancreas out of a dog and then they would inject in, let the blood sugars go high and then inject the extracted, um, hormone that they didn't know at the time was insulin. They extracted that and injected it into the dog and realized that the dog's blood sugars went from really, really high and dangerous to normal again. Uh, and then from that point forth, they were able to continue to extract that um, and give that to people uh, who were living uh, severely with uh, diabetes type 1 specifically. Uh, eventually, it progressed to the point where they were able to extract it also out of cows and pigs. And now we make it synthetically in a lab. Um, so that's kind of how insulin dis was discovered uh, back in uh, 1921. So kind of neat that uh, somebody, he had this crazy idea and it came to him in the middle of the night and he just went forward with it. He always wanted to figure this out and he did with along with uh, Charles H. Best. Um, and the first success of using insulin in a human was uh, with a 14 year old boy named Leonard Thompson. Um, he was extremely close to death from type 1 diabetes because he was on the starvation diet. And again, with those high blood sugars, you kind of are in a starvation process anyway with ketones. Um, and then they finally realized, hey, he needs insulin. So they injected him with insulin and they were able to bring his blood sugars down to normal. He was able to put weight back on and return to a healthy and normal life. Um, because of this, uh, Dr. Uh, Frederick Banting won the Nobel Prize in 1923, um, and they went on to eventually discover uh, that there was two different kinds of diabetes, type 1 and type 2, and then they eventually progressed to um, noticing uh, that they could create other types of insulins that we use today, like the rapid-acting insulins like Humalog and Novolog. Um, back then, they had it just extracted regular uh, insulin, which works well, but not as well in today's society, I guess, with people eating a more uh, busy, leading more busy lives and le eating a lot more heavier carbed things. Um, so that is the role Dr. Frederick Banting plays uh, in diabetes uh, and diabetes awareness. So happy birthday to him. Uh, obviously, he was born on this day uh, in 1891 in Alliston, Ontario, Canada. Um, he was a medicine scientist, physician, painter, and a war hero. So he did a lot of other things beyond just doing this. And I wanted to make this video to honor him. So I want to say uh, just, you know, I praise God every single day that this man walked the face of the earth along with Charles H. Best. Because without them, me and millions of other type 1 diabetics would not be alive today. We would be on starvation diets and dying. We wouldn't be, you know, be able to do anything or enjoy our lives and continue to live and thrive as, as well as we do today on insulin. And, um, you know, just to think that was, this is a little less than 100 years ago of the discovery of regular insulin. And look how far we've come today. We have rapid acting insulins. We have insulins that you can distribute in pumps. We have continuous glucose monitors like the Dexcom to allow us to see what our blood sugars are. Um, better meters, better technology uh, given to us through the doctors, more accurate test strips, uh, pumps that you don't really have to worry about anything. They're kind of automatic. Eventually, hopefully we'll get to artificial pancreases and closed loop symptom systems and hopefully for a cure. Um, I hope that there is a cure very, very soon. I hope, I hope, I hope, I pray. We have come so far in the last 100 years. It's uh, unbelievable and incredible to me. So with that being said, I think this wraps up this video. Uh, again, happy World Diabetes Day to all you type 1 diabetics out there and also type 2 just because uh, diabetes is diabetes. But especially to you type 1s out there, uh, Know that you're not alone. Know that I understand the struggles of getting up at 3 o'clock in the morning to check your blood sugar, taking multiple shots or multiple um, uh, doses of insulin a day, uh, constantly watching what kind of foods you're putting in your mouth, the stress and anxiety of dealing with jobs and families and school and work and whatever other things you do. I understand. Know that you're strong and you can get through it. Know that you are unique and that you 
have this disease for a reason, just like me. And hopefully you can inspire others to be um, happy and try to be as positive as possible, even living with an autoimmune disease like type 1 diabetes that could be very strenuous and strainful on us. Um, but I get a little emotional here. So again, thank the Lord for this man because we would not be alive today. And um, with that being said, keep pushing on you type 1 diabetics. If your blood sugars aren't behaving, Continue to move forward. Don't let them high or low blood sugars discourage you. Remember, we are greater than our highs and lows. We can do anything we want with diabetes because diabetes does not have us. We have diabetes. We can make a difference in the lives of millions of other people if we just open up and share and spread awareness about how to live with and manage with the disease that constantly we fight our bodies every second of the day. So with that being said, take care, God bless, and uh, happy birthday, uh, Dr. Frederick Banting. Bye, everybody.